Hey everyone! A couple weeks ago, I showed you how to create great lighting for your 2D games. We saw how the different lights worked, how to play with the color and intensity of them, and how to make them cast shadows to create an immersive environment. Today's video is going to push visuals further as I'll show you the basics of post-processing inside of Unity. To show you this, I'll use the project we created last time. If you haven't seen the video in which we make the basics of this, I recommend you go watch it right now, the link will be in the description. First of all, to enable post-processing in our scene, we have to have a global volume in our hierarchy. We also have to check the enable post-processing box in our camera. In the volume we created, we'll need a profile. It is in this profile we'll add the different overrides we want. Overrides will basically be the effects used like Bloom or Vignette. Before getting into the individual effects, let's talk a bit about the volumes. There are two main types of volumes. There are global and local. Globals will be applied to the camera, meaning no matter where you go or where you look at, the effects will be visible. Local volumes contain post-processing effects that can only be seen if you're in a specified area. This can allow you to create different atmospheres with color gradings or simply add a specific effect when a player goes to a specific place. For example, I added a local volume in the light area here. I added the vignette effect so when we go in, we can see the corners of the screen get darker. Right now the effect is really exaggerated, but we can give it a, some lower values to make it a more interesting effect. And that's pretty much it for volumes. One last thing, to make sure you get the best out of post-processing, make sure you enable HDR in your camera. HDR is mandatory for some of the effects and it just helps your colors look better. Now, let's take a look at the different possible effects and how we can use them to make our game's visuals more appealing. First up, the tone mapper. Um, when using HDR, you should always add a tone mapper. This basically ensures that you don't lose color definition in really saturated or desaturated areas. Now for the first real effect, the channel mixer. This one is a bit complex, but in summary, this allows you to control the influence a certain color has over another color. You have your three channels, red, green, and blue, and you can control how colors affect these channels. For example, if I select red and turn up the intensity of the blue slider, that means that all red colors will take a bluish tint. This creates this kind of purple everywhere on the scene since most of it contains blue due to the wall's colors and the overall darkness. Our next override is Chromatic Aberration. This one is a very cool effect that simply distorts the colors around the edges, creating this really trippy effect. This is a really nice setting to make a dazed effect in your game. The next effect is one of my absolute favorites, Bloom. Bloom makes all bright sources in your game glow, and I just think it looks so cool. I feel like this really makes the light feels more realistic. Now, color adjustments can help you. Well, adjust colors. There's a lot of settings and I won't cover them all, but they're helpful to adjust the feel of a scene. You can also create some really wacky effects by tweaking some of the values to their extremes. Color curves can help you do the same, but they're more complex and I'm honestly not familiar with how they work. Now onto another effect that can be useful, film grain. This lets you display noise on top of your image. There's many types of noise available in Unity and you can even import a custom texture if you want. Next up, Lens Distortion. This allows us to deform the camera in many ways. This can be useful for a variety of effects, but when tweaked to extreme values, you can achieve some pretty interesting artistic results, like these concentric circles I managed to display by setting all the values to an extreme. Our last color correction effect for today, white balance. This one allows you to change the temperature of a scene to cold for a bluish tint or to warm for a more orange hue. There is also a tint slider that does the same thing but with purple and green. There are a couple more color correction modules but I'll skip them since I'm not a color correction expert and these are probably way too specific for an amateur game dev like me. And for the last effect we're going to go over, we have Vignette. This is one of my absolute favorites. Basically, Vignette darkens the corners and edges of the screen. 
You can adjust the intensity of the vignette and the smoothness of the edges to achieve different effects. You can also check the rounded box to make it a circle instead of the eye-like shape it usually has. You can change the color also to create some really cool stuff. I definitely encourage you to play around with this one, it's super versatile and you won't regret it. There are even more effects available that I didn't go over, but they don't really work with 2D projects like motion blur or depth of field. But I really recommend you go and experiment with the post processing stack yourself. Also, keep in mind that for all of these examples, I use the effects on the global volume, but you can make these in local volumes to customize different areas. You can trigger certain effects with Go, for example, add a red vignet when the player's health gets low, or add chromatic aberration if the player gets poisoned or stunned. I'm now gonna go ahead and add some post-processing to make my scene look even better. After that, I'll explain the thought process behind my choices, and I'll show you the final result. See you in a bit! Okay, so here's what I added. First of all, in the global volume, I added bloom to make the lights glow a little more. I also added a vignette to amplify the darkness of the dungeon. However, I also made these three local volumes that remove the vignette. That means that when we are in the light, the vignette will disappear. I also changed the temperature to be a bit warm in these volumes, so centering the camera on lights should make the whole space feel safer. I also put a little bit of film grain in the global volume for that old vampire dungeon movie effect. Lastly, I have this box at the end of the room. The goal with this one was to let the player know there was danger ahead. I added a little bit of chromatic aberration and bloom to make the potions glow. I also slightly lowered the contrast to make it look a little bit less alive. Let's check out how everything looks. And here's a little before and after post-processing. And there we go! Getting good with post-processing will really help you step up your game's visuals, and I hope this video will has helped you to do just that. That's it for me today, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, follow me on Twitter, leave a comment, but most importantly stay hydrated, and I will see you next time. Bye!